Should I say it? How about them balls? Okay. It, it is a, a beautiful day today, even with a little bit of rain. It's, it's just, a, a, God is just awesome, and it's so amazing we can come and be here and worship Him. So let's start off with a prayer. Father, I, I do thank you for the day you've given us. I thank you for um, every family that is represented here. I, I thank you for uh, this community of faith. Father, we're here today because we love you. Uh, we want to hear from you, Father. Uh, let every word that is spoken out of my mouth be your words and not mine. Uh, Father, I pray that you'll send your Holy Spirit to guide us in our worship. Uh, help us to just let go and, and give you the best of all that we have. And so, Father, we ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That was a trip down memory lane right there. I, I used to deploy to England all the time, and I remember one of my uh, trips there and sitting in my room, and it was a cold, foggy English day, and some guy playing the bagpipes for, I guess, a, a wedding uh, was out in the fog of, of Great Britain playing that song. It's like, oh, my gosh, that was great. Um, let us stand as we sing our first hymn, and it is His Name is Wonderful, found on page 174. Two good ones in a row. Golly. Let's just sing songs today. I'd love to do that. That was wonderful. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you could sing that one three or four times in a row. I'd be quite happy with that. That was really good. Uh, again, just welcome. Good to see everybody here today. We've got a couple of announcements that I'd like to, to bring forward. Uh, tonight is, is our great opportunity to reach out to our community. 
and to demonstrate God's love and uh, just, just be there and, and be a part of our community. And so I invite you to, to come and, and be a part of that if, if you can. Um, if not, pray, pray for us. Just pray for us. Cover, cover the whole event in prayer. Um, and then also this Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we're going to have a vision team meeting. 1 o'clock, November the 1st at 630. We're going to have a vision team meeting. And uh, I think what we're going to be doing really is uh, Connie is going to kind of present the, uh, the children's ministry as, as she's got it planned out. And so really we're, we're kind of switching uh, out of the planning phase into the execution phase. But everybody is invited to come and be a part of that if you'd like to. Uh, and then on the, November the 13th at 6.30 is a charge conference. This is just the normal charge conference. We just vote on a couple of things. You do it every year. This is not the disaffiliation charge conference, so, uh, so don't, don't worry about uh, that. That will come later. Also, next week, uh, November the 6th, we will be having a special group here to play for us, to lead us in worship. Uh, you will love them, I promise you. And uh, if, if you do not love them, then I will double your admission price into the church for that day. Uh, and we had a, uh, the district superintendent was here on Thursday and had a good information meeting with her. Um, what, what I would like to do, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, which is the 10th of November, I uh, have just one last information meeting for those that might, uh, that might have questions uh, want to know more about it, ask some questions about uh, the, the, the vision that the United Methodist Church leadership has for the continuing United Methodists. Um, if, if you have some questions about that, please come and we'll get those answered. I just want you to be totally informed about, uh, about everything that's going on. And I, I think that uh, I, I try to stay out of it. This is, this is your church and your church vote. Um, but I think I owe it to the congregation to, to at least offer an informed opinion because I've been playing this game for a while. Um, so um, if, you, if you'd like more information, if you want to just kind of hear, come and hear what's going on, then that will probably be on the 10th of November. I, you know, I guess 6.30 we'll have in the bulletin next, next week. So um, uh, there is that. I think, did I get everything? One more, sir. Oh, uh, don't forget about your time change next week. Yes, yes, the, the, the uh, spring forward, fall, and fall, fall back, the good one. <laughs> so if you, if you forget to set your clocks back, we have Sunday school classes that you will be in time for. Please come and be a part of the Sunday school class. If you don't set your time back and you're in a Sunday school class, uh, good luck. Okay, let us continue our worship as we return back to God, his tithes and our offerings.
invite you to be seated. No, don't sit down. <laughs> don't listen to me. What are <laughs> get your exercise in here. This is to get Jesus in a cardio program. Uh, let's continue our worship as we sing our next hymn. Uh, it is My Hope is Built on page 368. <laughs> If you ever doubted if I need you, you can tell. I do. It, it is just wonderful. This church is amazing. I mean, Lisa is off uh, taking some time off, and we've got Suzanne that can come in and play. I mean, it's just so much talent here. Uh, I am, I'm just blessed by, by uh, being part of this. Um, do we have any prayer requests? Anything we'd like to take to God this morning? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I have one, Pastor. I have a new great great nephew. His name is Oliver <laughs> Smith, and he was uh, born at Duke. And they're expecting to do uh, three heart surgeries tomorrow. He weighs five pounds and three ounces. So please be in prayer for our little Oliver. Continue prayer for my sister Willie Jean Noble. She had some setbacks this week, um, so. She's still in the hospital at UNC Chapel Hill now four weeks. Please be in prayer. And, and we want to keep you and your family in prayer, too. That's, that's hard to go back and forth, just the pressure of, of having that and then the drive. So we want to keep you guys covered in prayer, too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, my neighbor, Marshall, she had Alzheimer's, she had a heart attack, and she was also diagnosed with broken heart syndrome. Oh, mercy. And uh, then my best friend's brother, Carol Hamilton, was in the Thank you. Any joys? Yes. I have a My nephew is from the back Amen. Yeah, I said that specifically for you because I kept waiting and kept waiting and you weren't coming forward with the trip back to here, so any others? Uh, we have a joy. We have a wedding this week. My granddaughter's getting married Saturday. Our granddaughter's getting married Saturday. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up for us. Father, uh, let's take the, uh, whatever it is we do next. Let's take these and any unspoken we have to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, just uh, thank you for just all that you do for us. Father, you are a, a, a perfect father, uh, and you love us, and you care for us, and uh, you know, your son told us that, that not even a sparrow falls from a tree that you don't notice that. And so, you know, you care about us. Um, you love hearing from us. Uh, when, we, when we come to you with our worries and our fears and our joys, um, it's, it's like your, your favorite children coming in and you listen. I just thank you for that. Father, we, we place all of these into your hands. And we do so with great confidence uh, because we know that you do hear us. So, Father, we, we thank you for that. Uh, Father, I thank you for everyone that is here today. And, Father, we, we, we love you and we need you. Um, even if we don't think we need you, we, we still need you. And so, Father, I just pray that you will send your Holy Spirit and just guide us and direct us and lead us. Um, inspire us. Help us to discern your call and your voice. Uh, help us to uh, just feel your leading. Father, we thank you for this church, and we uh, pray that you will guide us in all that we do here. Uh, the people outside these doors, they are really part of us. They're part of our family. Uh, this is the Grace Chapel Parish. And you have placed them in our care. So, Father, send your spirit out there to, to, to meet with them. Uh, and, Father, help us to, to know what you desire for us to do as well. Uh, Father, at the track and treat tonight, uh, we just pray that you will be there, that you will uh, show up in a big way. Uh, that in whatever way you think is correct, that you will... Um, Get somebody's attention tonight. Uh, change a life tonight. Uh, change a whole bunch of lives while you're at it. Um, and Father, we just thank you that you've allowed us to be a part of that, to, to partner with you into something that is, is that special. Uh, so Father, we just, just pray all these things. And we especially thank you for your son Jesus Christ as we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If there are any children that would like to be released for Children's Church,
They're from Morganton, so it might be Bear Waller. Um, great group. You don't want to miss it. Uh, then we're going to have two kind of standalone sermons the next couple of weeks. Uh, just, just something to, to, to informative and fun. And then, believe it or not, we enter into our Advent season. So we're like three or four weeks away from Advent, which is exciting also. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of where we're heading I want to start out today, and, and I'm going to, I don't normally do this, I want to read a bit of scripture to you to kind of set the scene of, of where we're going today. Uh, this is Genesis chapter 7, and it's verses 15 through 24. It says, Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then Noah, then the Lord shut him in. For forty days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than twenty feet. Every living thing that moved on the earth perished, birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. Men and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds of the air were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for a hundred and fifty days. That's kind of where we are. It was water. Water to the north, water to the south, water to the east, and water to the west. That's, that's all that Noah could see. The, the morning sun rose out of it, and the evening sun sets into it. And what we read in Genesis 7, we read that Noah and his family had just barely gotten on the ark when God shut the door and the rain began. What, what many say might have been the very first rain in the history of the world. Uh, and it rained nonstop for 40 days. And then, for another five months, it continued to rain. And the water continued to swell and to rise. And I just think, can you imagine what it was like on board the ark. Eating the same food, seeing the same faces, doing the same chores over and over again. Can you just imagine the smell? Um, both the animals and, and probably Noah, to be quite honest. And then on the seventh day of the seventh month, there is a sudden bump. And Noah and his family, they, they noticed that the constant rocking that they had gotten used to had stopped. 
And, and everyone stopped, and they, they kind of they looked at each other. Then Noah, he climbed up the ladder, and he opened up a window. What do you see out there, Noah? Water. Water to the north, water to the south, water to the east, and water to the west. Three months later, Noah sends out a raven, but it found no place to rest. He sent out a dove, but she returned to the ark, tired and spent. And so he waited for seven more days. He, he went and he, he gathered the dove from her cage. And he held her close to his chest as he climbed the ladder, close enough that he could, he could feel the dove's heart beating. And when he reached the window, he, he took the dove and, and he released her into the air. And he watched as she circled the ark a few times. And then she flew off into the distance. And soon she was just a speck. And then she was gone. All day long, he went about doing his chores. But, but ever so often, he would stop and he'd kind of glance up towards the window. But nothing was there. Later, in the evening, he climbed back up the ladder. And he stuck his head out the window again, and guess what he saw? Water. Water to the north, water to the south, water to the east, and water to the... Yeah. You, you, you know the word because you, you know the feeling. That, that sinking feeling that sometimes you get because of the stress of the office. Um, Maybe anger at your disability, frustration at things that, that never seem to go your way, the, the hopelessness of, of a failure at work or at school, uh, disappointment at the loss of a job, grief at the cemetery. We, we all know what Noah felt, uh, and we, we all need what Noah needed. He needed hope. You know, hope... Hope is not a solution to our problem, but it is the promise of an eventual solution. And I'm sure that, that Noah felt great disappointment as he began to descend the ladder back down. His legs begin to feel old like they never had before. His shoulders begin to stoop further than they did when he climbed up the ladder. His, his back ached just a little more than usual. I mean, we're not talking about a Gilligan's Island here. You know, this, this is not a three-hour tour. It has been eight months since God shut the door. His, his spirit was lower than it had been at any other point in time. I'm sure we've all felt what Noah was feeling about now. But as he turned to walk away, he, he heard it. It was the the soft cooing of a dove. And in her beak was an olive leaf. But it, it wasn't just an olive leaf, it, it was hope. Hope that, that, that things are going to get better. That's what hope is. Hope is a thing that tells us to, to keep on going when common sense tells us to stop. Hope is that thing that tells us everything is going to be okay eventually. We, we, we love our olive leaves. The, the doctor says, I'm not sure, but I think your condition might be getting better. Uh, the, the friend who says, man, I, I know this looks like a mess, but I think I can help you straighten it out. My friends would say about my checkbook when I had checks. You know, so, someone who has been through what you're going through before says, I know this is tough. But you're going to get through this. You know, hope isn't a solution to your problem, but it's the promise of a solution. Hope allows us to, to carry on when common sense tells us to stop. Uh, we, we love the olive leaves. And we, we love the people who bring them. The, the teacher who takes time to help a struggling student. The, the father who walks his daughter through her first broken heart. 
the wife of many years who stops to let that newlywed wife know that it's, it's not as bad as it seems and, and all husbands are moody uh, and that she's going to get through it. You know, maybe that's why so many people love Jesus. Jesus went about spreading olive leaves everywhere he went. The, the woman caught in adultery. Uh, you remember the story is found in John chapter 8. The, the mob breaks through the door and they drag her through the streets to stand before Jesus, probably barely clothed, if anything. She's surrounded by a mob. Noah was surrounded by a sea of water. You know, she's surrounded by a sea of anger, a sea of judgment. And then, who can forget Jesus' words? Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And then, one by one, the stones begin to fall as people turn and head for home. Then Jesus turns and speaks to the woman, and he says, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she answers, No one, Lord. And then Jesus hands her an olive leaf. Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. An olive leaf of hope. Many of you today may be asking, is there any hope? Hope for what seems like a, a dead-end marriage. Hope for medical or health problems. Hope for a mess of bills that continue to pile up. Hope for the, the search for that job that has gone on for months. Hope to be accepted by friends and family. I mean, these are the struggles that can pull the life right out of you. And, and even to us, Jesus offers an olive leaf of living hope. 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In, in Hebrews 13, uh, 5, Paul reminds us that, that God has said, I will never leave or forsake you. This, this actually comes from Joshua uh, 1, verse 5, which says, No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is always with us, no matter what. And, and then our greatest hope of all, for God so loved you that he gave his only son that if only you will believe in him, you will share eternity in the presence of your Savior, Jesus Christ. But Jesus came to earth. He, he died for our sins. He, he rose from the dead uh, for you and me. And, and because of this gift, we can now have, have a new relationship with our God. We can have God's spirit and strength within us every day of our lives. It is important that today each of us receive the hope that Jesus brings. You know, a, a, an olive leaf. It, it might not provide an immediate solution, but it gives us the promise of an eternal and eventual solution. So I wonder, wh what do you think Noah did with that leaf? You think he kind of just, just tossed it overboard? Or, or, or maybe he you know, put it in his pocket and, and later on in the day, you know, Mrs. Noah found it when she's doing the laundry. What is this thing doing in here? No. I bet with a hoop and a holler, he, he took that leaf below and everyone looked at it. Everyone touched it. Everyone smelled it. Even the puppy. Noah shared it with others. When we have been given hope, we must then turn around and give hope to others. You know, when, when we share hope with others, we're, we're telling them, you know, I have hope in you. I have hope for you. You know, we, we are all flood survivors. And because we have passed through the flood, we are all qualified to give olive leaves to those around us. 
And you might be sitting there saying, you know, I, I don't have any olive leaves to give. In, in fact, I'm the one who needs an olive leaf. Can't think of any floods. How many in here has gone through puberty? There better be some hands raising on that one. Really? Only three of us went through puberty? And, and you're probably saying, you know, puberty wasn't that bad. Exactly. And, and there is a young person out there, maybe coming to the track tonight, that needs to hear that. Who almost didn't come to track or treat or track, or track and treat because of the pimple. They need to hear that. It's not that bad. You know, I, and I'm impressed by the, the wedding anniversaries that I hear some of you talking about celebrating. 30, 40, 50 plus years. You know, there are young couples out there who need to hear that when the romance turns to reality, uh, there's, there's hope and that they can get through this. <coughs> Some of you have buried spouses or loved ones and you've lived to smile again. Some of you might be cancer survivors and you're still living life to the fullest. Uh, some of you maybe have been treated badly because of your age or your looks or, or who knows what, any one of a thousand reasons. But it didn't make you bitter. It only made you better. Someone out there needs to hear what you have to say. You know, while, while our struggles have been difficult, you know, maybe one of the benefits of our struggles is that we are now equipped to give hope to someone who's going through the same struggle. Each one of us is now members of the Dove Brigade, fully qualified to bring hope to those around us in our daily lives. 2 Corinthians 1 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort of with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You still aren't sure you have any olive leaves? Pick up the Bible. The Bible is the source of so many olive leaves for the Christian. Um, anger. Proverbs 14. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but one who has a hasty temper exalts folly. How about fear? Hebrews 13, 5. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Can anyone, what can anyone do to me? Or, or even Romans 8, 13. What shall we say then under these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's, that's, a, that's some hope right there. Loneliness. Again in Hebrews 13. I will never leave you. Guilt. Romans 8. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's people out there that need to hear that. Struggles. That's all of us. In all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. How about doubt? Anybody other than myself ever experienced doubt? You know, doubt is to your soul what infidelity is to your marriage. It, it, it eats away everything good. Proverbs 3 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Worse than that, this is probably the worst thing we will ever experience is despair. You know, despair is a place that we don't want anyone to go. People who, who go to despair often don't come back. Uh, despair is it's just increasingly dark uh, you, you can't return to a better place because that place is gone. Psalm 27, 13. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the day of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And I like the, uh, the, the NES version that says this. Um, I would have despaired if, it had not, if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I, I, I like that version. 
Now, some of you are saying, you know, I'm, I'm no good at memorizing scriptures. Well, actually, that's not true. Uh, as you work to memorize, your brain actually increases its ability and capacity to memorize. But, but let's assume that you're right. Let's assume that you're, you're, you're no good at memorizing Scripture. Don't. From the standpoint of receiving and sharing hope, you don't have to have it memorized. Just remember what it says. We don't need the head knowledge. We need the heart knowledge. So how about this? How about this one? You know, when, when I was in San Antonio, I went to seminary in Austin. It's about a 45-minute to an hour drive. And, and I, would, I, I wanted to learn to memorize Scripture verses. And so I would write them out on index cards. And so as I'm driving, I've got the, I've got the index card, on, and I'm driving this way, and, and I learn, yeah, I know, God was with me. And I learned Scripture verses. Um, I only remember one, though. How about this one? You know, you know God has told us that, that we should not worry about anything. You know, but but in, in everything that happens to us, everything is in His hands. And we place everything in His hands with confidence and thankful prayer. And when we do that, it brings us peace. Yeah, that's pretty good. Somebody would like to hear that. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's the only one I remember. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. But you don't have to do that. You know, hey, don't worry about it, because God's, God's got you. If you just pray, and you pray with thanksgiving, He's going to show up, and it's going to be okay. How about this one? You know, God tells us that, that even in our hardest times, if we look for Him, with all that we have, He's going to show up. We're going to find Him. That's Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not difficult. Or, or, or how about, all right, here we go. God tells us not to fear because we, we belong to Him. We don't need to fear because we belong to God. And, and He will be with us when we go through difficult times. So we're not going to be overcome by those difficult times. Somebody could want to hear that. Somebody might need that. That's Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when, I pass, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. See? I mean, in fact, the, 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 the Isaiah version probably is not as good as the paraphrase that you come up with. Last one. God will always be with you and he will never desert you. So don't ever be afraid or discouraged. A lot of people want to hear that. God's always going to be with you. Don't get discouraged. He's going to be there for you. Deuteronomy 31, 8 and 9. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. You don't have to memorize the scripture verses in order to gain hope from them. In order to spread hope for others. Just, just, just know what they say. You have to spend some time reading them. You read them. You look at them. You know, maybe you jot down your, your words for it. What did that say? You know? And, and you can remember that part. That's easy. And when God plants these things in your head, they will come back to you when you need them. Whether when you need them or whether you run into somebody that does need them. It doesn't have to be word for word. Just kind of know what it says so that you can give that hope. You, you can hand them that olive leaf. You know? Just study the scriptures. Focus on what God is telling you through those scriptures. Carry that with you. Olive leaves given to us and given to share so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. There was once a school system in a large city that had a program to, to help children keep up with their schoolwork during stays in the hospital. And one day, a teacher who was assigned to the program received a routine call asking her to visit a particular child. And she took the child's name and room number. 
and they talked briefly with, with the class's teacher. And the teacher said, you know, we're studying nouns and adverbs in this class right now. <coughs> and I would be grateful if you could help him understand them so he doesn't fall too far behind. The hospital program teacher, she went to see the boy that afternoon. No one had prepared her. No one had mentioned to her that the boy had been badly burned and was in great pain. And, and she, was, she was upset at the sight of the boy. And it, it kind of threw her off her game, and she stammered when she told him, you know, I've, I've, I've been here, uh, I've been sent by your school to, to help you with, with nouns and adverbs. And she did her best, you know, but, but she was really upset. When she left, she felt like she hadn't accomplished anything at all. The next day she goes in, and the nurse says, what did you do to that boy? <laughs> you don't ever want to get greeted that way. The, the teacher, she, she felt like she'd done something wrong. She began to apologize. And she said, no, 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 the nurse said, you don't know what I mean. We've been really worried about that little boy. But ever since your visit yesterday, his whole attitude had changed. He's fighting back. He's responding to treatments. It's as though he's decided to live. Two weeks later, the boy explained that he had completely given up. He'd given up hope until the teacher arrived. And then everything changed when he came to this simple realization. And he expressed it this way, expressed it this way. They wouldn't send a teacher to work on nouns and adverbs with a dying boy. I hate nouns and adverbs, quite frankly. But, but you see, the hope just her presence made. You have been given hope to give to those around you. First, receive the hope that you've been given in Jesus Christ. His, his strength, His wisdom, his, his comfort, His peace, His presence. Receive the fact that He, he promises to always be with us. And no matter what our eyes tells us, Accept the gift that Jesus offers. And then pick up your bag full of olive leaves and go out and spread hope. Now, you guys aren't city people, are you? This isn't an olive leaf. You know what this is? Anybody know what this is? It's a maple leaf. I got it off the tree right there in the park. I did it on purpose. You're going to drive around here. You're going to see these things all over the place. Okay. It's a reminder. God's hope is all around us. You just have to go pick it off the tree and give it to someone else. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the hope that you have given us. Father, help us to live into that hope. Help us to, to claim the hope that you have given us. Um, the hope that, you know, we're going to get through our situations. The hope that you're going to be traveling with us no matter what. The hope that, you know, even though maybe we're walking through the fire, we're not going to get burned. Might get a little singed. Father, help us to claim the hope that your son Jesus Christ died on a cross for us. And we need that. We need that more than anything. Help us to claim that promise. And then, Father... Help us to go out and spread hope. We live in an increasingly dark world where people have no hope. Help us, Father, to, to, to be the ones that you have chosen to bring that hope. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let's stand as we sing our final hymn. Jesus, the very thought of thee, found on page 175.
Amen. Remember on the way home, look for, look for all the hope that God's got out there. He's got to take